Welcome back to Insights. I'm joined by ACC Professor of Political Science, Tim Kuhnlein. And Tim, we were just kind of talking about Trump's cabinet picks. So let's talk about one who recently resigned, and that was General Flynn. Um, let's talk about you know, why that happened and kind of how bizarre it is. Well, it's a bit convoluted. It's not clear that he did anything illegal, per se, but um, obviously he was withholding information, or at least allegedly withholding information from um, the president, particularly the vice president. But the real issue, I think, with Flynn is more to do with the question of um, any collusion between the Trump campaign and then the C Trump administration with Russian officials during the election and after the election. And of course, it all comes back to the issue of um, the hacking, the Russian hacking, which is a gross violation of national security. And the question is, was the Trump administration, or um, even if it was a rogue force, or it, it appears that it's more than just a rogue force, um, one individual, um, there are at least three people implicated, um, both during the campaign and after the election, um, in some sort of dialogue. What was that dialogue about? Well, this is raising, I think, the primary concern. Was it an intentional effort on the administration side or the Trump team side to um, collude with the Russians to um, impact um, our domestic elections? And this is going to be a serious problem. Um, because even if you might think of this as a minor issue, uh, what it's done is deteriorate a sense of trust um, of the administration and the team. What is their real objective here? And um, we, we're seeing people, with, even within the intelligence agencies um, and the law enforcement agencies, our, our military now question, um, how do we manage um, if we can't trust? And so General Flynn resigning, that was, a lot of things have happened over the past week, but that happening kind of was a snowball effect to really show kind of what the turmoil that's going on in the intelligence community itself. So let's talk a little bit more about kind of how they're in disarray. Yeah, the intelligence um, communities, I mean, obviously there's a lot of politics there um, for agencies that one would like to think are apolitical, but clearly they can be easily politicized. And um, I think there's some semblance of um, at least the stable forces wanting to back off from the politics and really assess, did something wrong, so something terribly wrong um, happen here? And if that's the case, how do we manage this? But you've got all this um, cloud of suspicion and um, you know just insidious lying and um, towards what end is not clear, but is it deception? Is it about domestic, uh, the ability to deconstruct domestic policies to reorient, or is there really some collusion with a foreign government towards a larger global agenda without getting all conspiratorial? And so now we have um, interests within the White House intelligence agencies, our law enforcement agencies, which are kind of separate but under the executive branch, and then, of course, the question of um, Congress and its oversight of all of this. Um, it's a real mess. One could argue we are on the verge of a potential constitutional crisis here. I mean, just last night, the press indicated that um, uh, um, that uh, the intelligence agencies are being very careful about what intelligence they reveal to the president for fear that the executive office cannot manage this information, whether it's intentional or unintentional. And they don't trust that this stuff is not leaking to not just the American people, but, but who knows if it's being used in collusion with for a foreign government, Russia in particular. And talk about, you said it could be on the verge of a constitutional crisis. So what do you mean by a constitutional we crisis? We have the respect for the institution of the presidency is depreciating precipitously at a very early stage in um, a very volatile period of our politics. And um, eventually this partisan orientation is going to also dissipate because we have to get down to the core of the question, can we trust what we're being told? Can we trust how we're being led? Can we trust that where we're being led is in, truly in the interests of the nation? Or is it in the interests of some particular private interest? whether it's a domestic group of people 
um, friends, family, whatever the case may be, or a foreign government that um, we've had very specific policies towards that can be reoriented, but when you're trying to reorient with this level of suspicion, you have a, a serious problem. I mean, Trump is now talking about bringing in um, someone to evaluate the intelligence community. And when you start looking at who these people are and what their agendas might be, it starts to get re even more complicated. Um, and if our own intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies start to lose trust in, in the leadership, um, a, a military, a special ops general questioning what's going on. No one's leading. We don't know who's leading. A primary a Republican um, Congre uh, Senator, John McCain, and others increasingly questioning the legitimacy of um, or the integrity of uh, leadership here. Um, this is serious and at this stage of the game. Definitely. We're still only a month into a presidency. Well, and we don't have the overwhelming majority of the positions filled that are seemingly necessary to operate our federal executive branch. And what positions are those? Well, we're talking about 4,000 positions um, beyond the high-level appointments of secretaries. I mean, not even half of the, secretary, the secretarial positions are filled. Um, now, one might say this would be a convenient way of reducing the federal government, but it's not an orderly way. And there will be potential repercussions, especially when we see executive orders rolling out that are incoherent and, and um, not, not clearly interpreted, um, at much less implementable because of the confusion by lack of qualified personnel who, I mean, experts in these fields who make the system function. This is dysfunction. And um, I want to talk about, you said, President Trump wants to bring an investigator in to investigate the intelligence community itself. So let's talk about who that person yeah, is. Yeah, his name is Steven Feinberg, and um, he's an interesting um, figure, like so many. Um, he's the um, associated with uh, Cerberus, which is um, a capital management company, a private equity firm. They own DynCorp, which is an international security company for um, helping the State Department. Um, and they also own Remington, for example, um, the major arms manufacturer. But what's interesting about this is the, the confluence of these seeming attempts to provide oversight, yet the connections of business and so many of this, this, core, peop this core group of people around Trump, it, the network is amazing. Um, uh, and, and so much of it is oriented towards their business operations and how they feed off of government. Um, but now they are part of government. They're running government. They're managing government. And it just, it, it seems, you know, when you look at the number of people who have actually been appointed, the number of people who are repelling away from the administration out of fear that this is just not trustworthy, we don't know what the end game here is. It's a lot of confusion and contradiction. There's a lot of deceit, a lot of lying, and bold-faced lies that are caught, um, Flynn being an example, that if we have much more of this, um, what we have is a very rump core of people who are all very much interconnected with one another, and it begs the question, who inter whose interests are they really looking um, to protect? Um, you know, if you dig into Feinberg a little bit more, um, you know, he's in the midst of, or at least the Cerberus um, and DynCorp operation are in a $10 billion contract legal dispute with the State Department right now about um, some air, air support controversy regarding counter-narcotics -nar operations. And this guy, this is the very same guy and company that was going to buy out Blackwater, um, which of course is Betsy DeVos's brother's former company. And we're talking about private militaries here that are contracting with the federal government to make billions and billions of dollars off of taxpayer dollars. Granted, we may need these services, but it begs the question, of what kind of dynamic are we creating here for whom? And when you start to see this very small group of elite people uh, very much at the center of operating a government that is in utter disarray because of lack of trust, um, it makes you wonder where this is all going. It's definitely some in an interesting topic, Tim, but we're going to continue this conversation after the break, so stay tuned because there's more insights coming up.